So Summit watched our disc brake install video and noticed we had a we had some parts missing in the inside of our diff here, our, our little carrier, a little bit hollow, and they said that's no good. So we want to thank Summit. They sent us this Eaton locker. We want to show you guys how to install it because uh, one wheel peels are just no good. Hello, hello. Here we go. So good. Yeah, man. Torque converter is tied up against the pump and the flywheel. So I'm machining a little bit off the face of the torque converter. Okay, so we got the GTO off, the hoist transmissions in, drive shafts in. This does not have a posi, so we need a posi. <laughs> that actually worked pretty good. So if I could get as lucky with the pinion as I did with the ring here, then uh, away we go. Right, boss? Do a dance. <laughs> Thank you. It's a random box. <laughs> Severed head. <laughs> Perfect. Look at that. Bearings, seals. Look at that. Everything that you need. Not that like to feel confident. Look at this. Yeah. That's paint to check your backlash. Everything. Oh. Brand spanking and new. <laughs> Shouldn't be too, too bad. All right, so if you are just replacing your carrier and you are not replacing your ring and pinion, we have a video on how to remove your carrier and that's in our disc brake video. So you can check that out. We're not gonna cover how to remove this again because it's gonna be a long enough video as it is already. To reinstall it, you will need a dial indicator on a magnetic base because you need to check the backlash. Backlash is the distance uh, between my pinion gear and my ring gear. As these parts warm up and heat up, that space will decrease. And um, if you don't allow for that space initially, it's gonna bind, it's gonna make a giant mess inside your diff. If you are replacing your ring and pinion as well, you need to have a really good impact gun. Um, three, 400 foot pounds at least, because that's what it takes to crush our crush sleeve. And we'll get into that later, but you cannot install that without a massive fight and bars and swearing and scratching your car, unless you have a decent impact. Now you also need a inch pound torque wrench, and this one is in foot pounds, because I had to borrow one from my neighbor. You want one with a, with a needle like this, because you need to have 14 to 19 inch pounds of rolling resistance when we set up these bearings, which will also be later in the video. But if you don't have one, you don't have a neighbor that has one, we'll put some links down to Amazon or wherever else where you can find a reasonably priced inch pound torque wrench. Here we go. Okay, so you wanna eat in locker. There's a few things that you first need to figure out what, what you need. Uh, you need to know, am I working on a car or a truck? Looks like a nice 67 GTO to me. Uh, then you need to know what is my final drive ratio. If you are planning on doing this over the winter, it's something you know, you got something for Christmas and you've got two months to, um, to install this before it's summertime and you can go for a drive again, you can pull your diff cover. Um, you need to count how many bolts are on it. Is it 10 or is it 12? We've got a 12 bolt GM car rear end. Now we need to know the final drive ratio. You can put a little piece of paint on your pinion gear and a little bit of paint on your ring gear. Count the amount of teeth on your ring and divide it by the number of teeth on your pinion and that will tell you your final drive ratio. Now your final drive is how many times your input shaft turns to get one full rotation of your ring gear. For a very torquey engine, something that you step on there, you break your tires loose, you go woo, you probably have a high gear ratio, something like a 411. If you stomp on it and you can get out and walk beside the car, but you get decent mileage for an old muscle car with a big engine, you probably have a low gear ratio. If you want to do it overnight and don't want the car to be down for a long time, I suggest getting the full kit, the bearings, the seals, uh, and whatever else you need for the Eaton, because you're gonna have to pull your axles out, you're gonna have to take your brakes, everything off. While you got your axles out, it's a good time to replace your axle seals. But when you jack up your car without taking anything apart, because you wanna order the parts, rotate the input shaft and make sure that both tires are spinning and make one full revolution. So it's handy to have somebody on either side of the tire to make sure that both tires are turning, because your open diff will really mess with you. <laughs> so 
we got this stuff from Summit. Usually only takes two days. Uh, you order it one day, you have a good nap. The next day you get prepped, you get excited. The day after that, your parts show up and you're burning tires again that night. Uh, but uh, it's always good to have everything you need before you start. So the installation kit comes with shims, input shaft, seal, bearings for your pinion shaft, and your carrier, plus your crush seal and a new nut to go with your ring and pinion. There's a few things that we learned setting this up about rear ends and also about Summit and their return policies because we found out that we had a 273 rear end, um, which is great mileage, not much torque down below. Um, our engine puts up 430 foot pounds of torque right now at 2800 RPM, so it's not bad. We're gonna do a lot of cruising with it this summer, but when we ordered our gear set talking with our supplier, he said he couldn't find a 273 differential carrier for us. And it's important because the different gear ratio sets have a different size um, pinion. When you change your gear ratios, either this gear gets bigger or smaller, and your ring gear either has to move this way or this way inside the differential. And that determines where your flange is in your pinion. So each carrier is matched with a specific gear set because this flange will be in a different spot. It'll be either be higher or lower depending on what gear set you have. We started with a 308 to a 373 rear end. That did not fit. I could clearly look at that and, and that would not fit. So we went through the website again. We found one for a 273, then found out that that one was for a pickup truck. Pickup truck rear ends and car rear ends are different. The pinion on a truck is actually smaller. So we got that gear set. We thought it would fit, which is this one, which is why there's bearings installed on it. But we realized that as soon as I tightened the bearing cap down, that last little bit, it would bind. There's nothing I can do. So we ended up getting a 308 rear end. Gives us a little bit more torque down below and uh, still decent mileage for what we're doing. If you just want to uh, skip to how to install the carrier, jump and skip all the hoopla of changing your ring and pinion and how to set that up. Otherwise, we're just gonna go right into um, changing your ring and pinion and then um, include the diff carrier as well. So here we go. Okay, so we have our carrier out. We need to get rid of our pinion or input shaft. So inch and an eighth nut, uh, best thing to use is an impact gun. And then once the yoke is off, lightly tap the yoke with a hammer, you can slide that off. It's just splined on the input shaft here but this bearing is a tight fit on this part here. So take your nut, put your nut back on again until it is flush with the threads, and then you can hit that with a hammer and you can, you can tap this bearing off. So now that you've got your uh, pinion shaft out, you can knock out your old races. And there's actually a notch in the, uh, in the differential itself that allows you to see the race. Grab a nice big heavy punch and just knock it out uh, side to side, your inner and your outer race. They come supplied um, in your kit and are actually a match to the, uh, the bearings that come with it. Um, to install the new ones, same thing, just punch them right back in again. Make sure that your surfaces are nice and clean and there's nothing behind it that could keep it from sitting uh, square in the bore. Um, you wanna clean this off on the inside so that the seal has a nice spot to ride on, otherwise you will have a leak. You're left with your crush sleeve, which is a one-time use only. You can get rid of that. And then you're left with a bearing and your pinion gear. Now behind here is a bunch of shims. If you opt for the rebuild kit from Summit, you will get new bearings with your ring and pinion. Highly recommend it. Comes with your shims for behind the bearing. It comes with shims for your uh, carrier side to side, new seals, your Loctite, your paint that you need to set everything up. Highly recommend it. Uh, but if you don't feel like fighting with this bearing, you're doing this at two in the morning, like most normal gearheads. If you want to try and save this bearing, you can take this off, take it to a machine shop and get them to ream just a little bit off the inside of that bearing. That allows you to um, slide your bearing in off and on a couple times. Same with this one. Just get them to just take a little, little die grinder and just clean off the inside so these bearings slide easily on the shaft. That allows you to change the amount of shims that are going behind your pinion. 
Uh, local truck shops, anything like that will have these bearings. They're generally 10, 15 bucks. Um, if you have to pull it off again, you can pull it off and then your final press, you can press that new bearing that you just got for your final assembly. These are a press tight fit and they're a pain to get on and off. If you feel lucky, you can leave this bearing on and take a stab at how many shims you need on your new ring and pinion. Generally about half is a good place to start. Now we'll start with that many shims. Press your bearing on and cross your fingers and hope that your teeth line up. Just be gentle and you wanna make sure that you're, when you're pushing it on or hitting it on that you have exhaust or, or a pipe that fits pretty snug around the shaft and hits the bearing right here so you don't damage the outside carrier part of your bearing. Once you have that, install your new ring and pinion without the crush sleeve and put your bearing on there. If you haven't machined one that fits snug, that's okay. Um, because you can tap it back out again, just like you did the old one, but put your new bearings in, uh, yoke over top, and then tighten it down with the old nut. So without the crush sleeve in there, we can tighten this nut. You can hold it, put it back on the impact, just don't over tighten it, obviously. That's not good. We just want to put a little bit of preload on it. Just bottoming it out there. So now you have this inside your differential. You have two bearings opposing each other that are tapered pointing each other. Now there is a preload that is very important. You cannot have too much space where this is able to go back and forth. It'll start marring your, your bearings. Take your bearings out, it'll be noisy and it'll affect your teeth where they mesh as well. If you have it too tight, you will burn these bearings out and cause just as much damage. So. What we need to do is compress these bearings to the proper preload. And the way to measure that is to take your inch torque wrench and put an inch and an eighth socket on the nut. It needs 14 to 19 inch pounds resistance to turn this pinion shaft with no gear on it. Okay, so we have our pinion gear in our differential with the proper preload of the bearings and a guesstimation, a random shot in the dark or an educated guess of how many shims we need behind the pinion gear um, or the same amount as what you started with. That's always a good way to start too. We can install our new ring onto our carrier. Now this is also a very tight fit. You can warm this up in a oven or on a hot pad and it'll slide on very nice or you can just line it up and with the holes, the threads just catch, pull it up nice and even. Make sure that there are no burrs on this, that you might wanna take a file and make sure that this is perfectly smooth. Same with your carrier, especially if it is a used one, because um, we don't want to have any imperfections that can have the tooth not sit perfectly square and level to the carrier. We're gonna lock tight our new bolts that's in our kit and torque it to 55 foot pounds. If you want, you can just take a couple studs in there and drop it through, or you can uh, just take your time and do it right. And make sure that it's lined up first. some Lakatide. Stick that in the vise and we'll torque that down. Once the new bolts are torqued down to 55 foot pounds with Loctite on it, we can take the whole assembly and put it into our differential and start uh, setting our backlash. Beauty. When you're putting your carrier back in, make sure that you have a handful of shims within reach that you can put in. Stick. 
put your carrier in and then jam as many shims as you can on the right and on the left starting with about the same amount on both sides making sure that you have skinny shims on both sides so you can move the carrier back and forth to set up your backlash torque your bearing caps to 66 foot pounds and then check your backlash if you have too much backlash, you need to move the teeth closer together by taking shims from the right side and putting them on the left. If you don't have enough backlash, you need to move the teeth away from each other by taking shims from the left side and putting them on the right. Follow that? You want to get the needle as close to a 90 on the tooth as you can and you want to check it in three spots. And then uh, we'll call that good. So, and I swear that was the first time I shimmed it up, <laughs> that actually worked pretty good. So if I could get as lucky with the pinion as I did with the ring here, then uh, away we go. Right, boss? Who wants a nice soft coat when you can have gritty, right? Yeah, that's right. Well, hello there. Welcome to Color Your World. I am Bob the Boss. And I'd like to personally invite you to paint your teeth along with me. We're going to start with this puke yellow that's supplied in your kit. You're just going to want to spread that out on your, on your little canvas here. You want to take a, this bristle brush that's supplied in the kit as well. You just want to paint our teeth. Just take your, take your brush there and just, just brush it on those teeth. Look at that, a little extra, that's okay. But, you may have heard a little saying, you know, happy little accidents, there are no mistakes. Well, that's, that's completely a lie, that's not true. Because if you mess this up, you see this, this, this diff is gonna get hot. It's gonna, it's gonna get red hot. It's gonna burn, it's gonna get so hot, it's gonna explode. I'm gonna put some red hot shrapnel in, in this fuel tank. And you know, you're gonna be driving along and it's gonna catch fire. And you know, this, you really wanna pay attention. You just brush that up, get it in there, don't be shy. And I know some of you might be gagging while you're putting this on. Somebody chose this color, you know, and it is what it is. You know, it wasn't an accident. Somebody did this on purpose. Shake off the excess. And there you have it. Thanks for coming along today. You can point to people, say, I did that. There we go. Okay, once you have that in there, you want to put a little bit of resistance on it. Um, now that they're all painted, and then just turn it. We'll turn it one way, and then we'll turn it the other way. Okay, so you can see the contact patch there. It's not quite to the very bottom of the, the toe. Um, it's not really in the heel. It's kind of in the bottom um, third of the ring gear, and that's perfectly okay. You're not going to be able to uh, change the contact that much back and forth as the heel and toe. You want to make sure that it's not down at the bottom of the teeth or right on the very edge. No real sharp lines. You got a nice gradual spread out pattern there. No sawtooth, no shark fins, anything like that. Um, you gotta adjust your heel and toe, but we're actually pretty good with that. So, we can test that in a few different spots, and then we'll take our yoke back off again, we'll put our crush sleeve in there, and um, that's got the trickiest part because you get one shot, uh, and especially with it in the car, you absolutely need to have a decent impact gun to uh, be able to tighten that. It takes about 400 foot-pounds of torque on the nut to crush that sleeve to push the preload on the bearing what's actually happening is you want you want those bearings to face each other on the right tension but you don't want that nut to back off so they have the crush sleeve in between that all that's supposed to do is put tension up against that nut so that the nut doesn't come off loctite it um, in the kit it's actually locked nut loctite that as well but if you tighten those bearings too much you can't back it off because now there's no um, there's nothing for the uh, yoke to bottom out against and the nut is not going to keep your yoke on and then it's going to start rattling, it's going to make a mess. So, um, we're going to take this carrier back out again. We're going to make note of which shims are on the right and which shims are on the left. So we can just put it back as is. 
We put our crush sleeve in, put the nut on, then we can put it back in and then test it again. Bob the boss is busy. See if we can come back. Uh, we'll clean the carrier while we're at it. We'll take off this whole gasket. There's a new gasket in the kit and we are golden. Here we go. Okay, so the setup on the pinion shaft is extremely important. We've got two tapered bearings facing each other that need a certain amount of pressure on it. See, see the play in it? We need to take that up, but we don't need it to be too tight that it gets hot. So we need to pre-lube the bearing. So we've done that with some axle oil. Of course, we're using Pennzoil, we'll use 7590. Install our crush sleeve, put it in there, and this crush sleeve takes about three to 400 foot-pounds to, to compress this. And when that happens, um, you have to use a good impact to be able to do that, and you get one shot. If you mess it up and you go too tight, then backing it off, this doesn't sit up against your bearing anymore and your bearing is going to slide on the on the shaft your nuts going to come loose and it's going to cause a lot of damage so you get one shot so if you are using your impact gun you really have to pay attention to how much the socket turns and then keep checking it with your torque wrench um, and then that is your final assembly replace the seal uh, make sure that your yoke the sealing surface is nice and clean and smooth and then you are good to go So you can tap the bearing on um, if you need to get somebody to hold the shaft while well, you just tap the bearing on you can do that then we will put our seal in there once the outside is clean you don't have to put anything on the seal because as you punch it in it melts it and seals that up so find something that goes on the outside like your wheel centering thing for your tire balancer whatever it takes pop that seal in and then we can throw the yoke on you're popping your yoke on, make sure to take some emery cloth and make sure that it's nice and clean there. Make sure that your nut gets a little bit of that special red juice. Don't be shy. Nobody wants to buy your leftover Loctite on eBay, so just use it all. It's also a good idea to put a little bit on the threads because as you're spinning this on, it kind of disappears on the thread. So we'll put a little bit on the threads on the pinion and then we'll thread that on. I should be all right so far because <laughs> it's not tightening very easy, but I might have to grab the three quarter and then inch pounds. You want 19, sorry if you're not a focus there. Not what it takes to start it, but to turn it. And I'm right at 20. See that blurry mark there? 20, which is a thou too much. I think I'm gonna let it go. Pop that back in again, as is. Check everything again. And you've got a working, finished diff. And since Summit has Pretty well everything that you need. Now's the time to replace your uh, axle seals and your wheel bearings. You've got a brand new axle. So, uh, happy trails, hope that helped you out. Um, I'm gonna put the diff cover back on again. Put a little bit of diff oil in it. We'll be doing burnouts before you know it. Here we go. <laughs>